Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter The Solid State. Moving on with our discussion of the packing efficiency, in this video I am going to tell you about the packing efficiency of BCC structures and the simple cubic structure, that is the unit cell. As I told you in the previous video that when we want to find out the packing efficiency, we are finding out the percentage of volume occupied by the spheres which are the constituent particles. And to do that, we write down, we find out the volume of the spheres, volume occupied by the spheres divided by the total volume of the unit cell. And since we are talking of simple cubic unit cell, the volume of a cube is the, uh, the cube of a side because all sides are equal. Therefore, it is the cube of a side. And in this case, we call it the sides are A. Each side has a length A. And we know a face diagonal, as we did in the face centered cubic, as I did in part, part 10, was B. So the face diagonal was a length B, the side is A, and here, in this case, for this explanation, I'll be using a body diagonal. A body diagonal means that I'm using how many spheres? Three spheres, as you can see. One is in, in the corner in the back, and the other one is in the corner in the front. So this sphere, this sphere, and the sphere in the center of the body. These three spheres, so diagonally across the body of a cube, diagonally, if you draw a line from A to F, you get a body diagonal. So the body diagonal would be different, the length of the body diagonal would be different from the length of the face diagonal and it would be different from the side. So we'll call this body diagonal as C. Let us call it C. Right? So now that we know we have the, face, the length of the face, the length of the diagonal on a face and uh, sorry the length of an edge or the length of um, all sides of a cube and the diagonal across a face is B and the diagonal across the body is C. After having labeled these positions, let us now find out the volume occupied by the spheres and then divided by the volume, total volume of the uh, cube and then multiplied by 100 to get the packing efficiency in percentage. Now what do we do? Take a look here. If you take one face, one, two and if you take two sides like this two edges and sides and you draw a line you get a right angled triangle like we did uh, in part 10 if you have this this is one face that is e f and d let us say this is c d e f let us say this is c d e and f so from f to d and this this is e so e f d will form a triangle and this triangle would be a right angled triangle Right? So triangle EFD, so in triangle EFD, you have F here, you have E here, and D is here. So in triangle EFD, which is a right angled triangle, here it appears to be, uh, since I've tried to make the entire cube a three dimensional figure in two dimensions, this does not appear to be 90 degrees, but all angles on corners are 90 degrees, you are aware of it. So this is a 90 degree that is a right angle triangle, therefore the Pythagorean theorem should be applicable here. So in triangle EFD, according to the Pythagorean th theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the squares of the other two sides, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So you have B square, that is this is B, so and these two are A, these two are equal, although my uh, the diagram that I've made is not to scale. So B square should be equal to A square plus A square. That is this A and this A. Both, both of these FE is also A and ED is also A. So B square would be equal to A square plus A square which is equal to twice A square. From this we say what is the length? What would if B square is twice A square what is B? B would be equal to under root 2 A. Right? This is the first step in the derivation. In the next step, what do we do? In the next step, we go to triangle, which is the body centered. That is F, A, D. We go to triangle F, A, D. Or you can say A, F, D. This is A, this is F, and this is D. So A, through the body, it will go down. 
and this is D. So if you see D to A, this and the line going across, that is that is a line going across from here to F, would also be a right angle triangle. If you really look at this, angle triangle A, F, D. The angle between A, that is this D, A and D, F is also right angled. So this is also a right angled triangle and now the body diagonal here for this right angle triangle is the hypotenuse. Therefore, Pythagorean theorem will be applicable here too. So what do we do now? For this triangle, that is for triangle AFD, now C squared, that is the hypotenuse, will be equal to, now for this triangle, all three sides are not equal. They are all different. For this triangle, that is EFD, the length ED and EF were equal, they were A. But for this triangle, that is AFD, AC is uh, AF is C, FD is B, and AD is length A. So the hypotenuse, that is C square, will be equal to A square plus B square. And we already calculated the value of B. B is under root 2A. So what would B square be? B square would be equal to 2A square. So let us substitute the value of B square from here. Here B square was 2A square. So A C square would be equal to A square. Plus what is the value of B square in terms of A? It is 2A square. In other words, C square becomes equal to thrice A square. C square is equal to 3A square. Therefore, what would C be just as we calculated B? What would C be? C would be equal to the under root of 3 and A square would be A. So it will be root 3A. Now that you found the value of C, let us move on and talk of this length, that is the body diagonal, in terms of radii of the spheres because our aim is to find out the volume of the spheres occupied, uh, of all the spheres that are present in the unit set. So on the basis of this, if we want to talk in terms of radii, the length C is, or okay, we can say this would be, this length C would be equal to 4 radii. 4 radii how? This circle here has one radius, half of it is out. Again, my diagram is not two meters. So this is one radius, one radius. This half is one radius. This half is one radius. And this half is one radius. So you have four radii, again. So you would say C, that is under root 3A, would be equal to 4R, right? It is equal to 4R. So on according to this, you can calculate the value of A. A would be equal to 4R upon root 3. Or R can be written as just, you are exchanging the places. R, in other words, would be A into root 3 or root 3A upon 4. Right? So now, in order to find out the packing efficiency, we need to find out the volume of the spheres. To know that, we should know how many total spheres are present in a body-centered cubic unit cell. As I told you in a few couple of videos that I have been doing, all the spheres in the corners occupy only one-eighth of a particular room. So each ball in the corner is contributing only one-eighth and there are eight balls. So one-eighth into eight is one. So all the balls in the corner are actually making one whole sphere or ball. And there is one sphere in the center of the body. So that, that sphere totally belongs to the unit set. So how many spheres are present in a body-centered cubic unit set? There are 8 on the corner, so 1 8th of 8, which is 1, plus 1 in the center, that is, in a body-centered cubic unit cell, the number of spheres is 2, or constituent particles is 2. And what is the volume of a sphere? The volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. We already know that. And since there are two spheres, the volume of two spheres would be equal to 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So that is the volume occupied by the spheres. And what is the total volume of the cube? The total volume of the unit cell, that is the cube, is the cube of the side. That is A is the length of the side. So it would be A cube, which we have already calculated. What is A? Is 4 A is 4 R by root 3. So it is 4 R by root 3, the 
whole cube. It is the cube of 4r by root 3. Now substitute these values in packing efficiency equation and you will get the packing efficiency. So what is packing efficiency? It is equal to the volume of the spheres divided by the volume of the cube into 100. And we've calculated the volume of the spheres of two spheres is 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So write down 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube divided by the volume of the unit cell which is 4 by root 3 r whole cube. So 4 by root 3 r whole cube. And 2 4 is 8. This becomes 8 by 3 pi r cube. And in the denominator you have 4 cube. 4 cube is 64 divided by root 3 into root 3 into root 3. Root 3 into root 3 becomes 3 and root 3 remains so it becomes 3 root 3 whole and uh, in a bracket it's been put and r cube. The r cube and r cube will get cancelled out here and if you put the value of pi you will get uh, into 100 will give you the percentage and this percentage will come out to be equal to 68%. Right? So this is how you calculated the packing efficiency of a body centered cubic unit cell. Now we will move on to a simple cubic unit cell and calculate the packing efficiency of that and then compare all three packing efficiencies. Give me a minute to draw the diagram. Let us now come to the packing efficiency of a simple cubic unit cell. This is actually the simplest. In a simple cubic unit cell, there are spheres present only on the corners of the cube. And as we know that each corner is equally divided by eight unit cells or each corner is equally divided by eight rooms because it is this room, the room adjacent to it, the one behind it and the one there for that corner. And the four rooms similarly around that corner on the top floor, on the floor above this. So that corner, the sphere present on that corner is being equally shared by eight rooms or eight unit cells. So the contribution of a sphere in the corner is only one eighth in a room. And since there are eight spheres, Therefore, each one contributing one eighth. Therefore, in a simple cubic unit cell, the contribution of the spheres is only one. How? Because one eighth of eight corners, one eighth of eight, one upon eight into eight is equal to one. So there is only one sphere in a simple cubic unit cell. Another thing, when you make a simple cubic lattice, we imagine that every sphere is touching the other one adjacent to it. So if you have one side, that is A, you'll have two spheres at the corners. And now again, my diagram is not made uh, properly. Uh, this should have been in the center and this should be the radius of the circle. And uh, the radii of the two, like the two radii should make one length. One half of this sphere and one half of that sphere and both the spheres touching each other. That should make one side. So what is the length of a side in terms of radii? It will be 2r, like we found out the length of the uh, hypotenuse in terms of the radii. Here, there is no need of finding the, uh, uh, making a triangle and finding out the hypotenuse because here, all you're concerned about is the corner now to find out the, the volume of the unit cell and the volume of the sphere. So a length in terms of radius can be written as 2r. So a is equal to 2r. So what would be the volume of the unit cell? The volume is a cube. So the volume would be 2r whole cube and 2 cube is 8 and it would be equal to 8r cube. Now that is the volume of the unit cell. And now you need to know the volume of the constituent particle and how many constituent particles or spheres are present in a simple cubic unit cell? One. 1 8th of 8 which is equal to 1. So there is only one sphere. Since a simple cubic arrangement has only one sphere, therefore the volume of that one sphere can be written as 4 by 3 pi r cube. And what is packing efficiency? Packing efficiency is volume of the spheres divided by the total volume of the unit cell into 100 to give you the packing efficiency in percentage. So you, the volume of the sphere, there's only one, is 4 by 3 pi r cube and the volume of the unit cell is 8 r cube. The r cube and r cube will get cancelled and uh, 4 by 3, 4, 2 is 8 and uh, 2 into 3 would be 6. So you get pi by 6 into 100 and when you find, when you solve this, 3.14 upon 6 into 100 will give you 52.4 is the packing efficiency percent, is the packing efficiency of a simple cubic unit cell. So from this, what do we understand? What was the packing efficiency of face-centered cubic 
or HCP or CCP packing, which is also called face center cubic, was 74%. The body center, the packing efficiency of body center cubic unit cell was 68% and the packing efficiency of a simple cubic unit cell is 52.4 percent so this shows that the packing efficiency of the face centered cubic is the highest which means that forms the most compactly packed uh, constituent particles of a solid or the most the best packing or uh, condensed packing is that of the solids which are arranged in the fcc kind of an arrangement so this was about packing efficiency. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.